Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, we were in a place that I did not write the name of it down. Oh, there we go. Telestia. Thank you, SK. We are in Telestia, which is basically some holy sanctuary realm that was closest to heaven, but it has been corrupted pretty much and we gotta find our way across an invisible maze while dealing with some souped up boss rematches oh hey we made it to the end i was right at the well you never know i could have chose the wrong path at the start of this episode heck yeah i'm gonna save Okay, so, what is going to be at the other end of this, then? I'm going to say this is where our person is. Yep. Well, that's convenient. Distinctly human voice. And light disdainful land for laughter. <laughs> that was disdainful, right? I am having trouble saying disdainful. Oh, you're a zombie. All right then. Neat. I mean, the light bridge is neat. Not so much being a zombie. Priyan longingly says, Zealies, my dear child. Oh, that's right. I think Priyan was a guardian angel for this guy. It was a good thing she didn't become lost in this desert as well. <laughs> Somehow, I knew it was you, even before you spoke. Rian Fierth, the ever steadfast goddess of love, whose ruby wings all of Indian sing in their praise to her, encompass the downtrodden in her fiery, passionate embrace of solace. I still possess enough of my former humanity to remember that much about Elvinian sentiment, it seems. Prian sadly says, Yes, that is me. Although, considering how things turned out the last time I chose a particular human child a Serena to watch over in his life, I fear I have fallen severely short of such an honorary title. And for that very loyalty and forgiving nature, I feel I could not possibly hate her more. It makes me sick at heart to see that you've come all this way into never-ending darkness just for me. He who betrayed you and your sisters, and helped the devil himself steal the innermost precious hearts of all four of the Solus Emsu goddesses. The angels who together represent the four great virtues that the people of Elvenia all treasure as the most secret of guidelines to govern their lives. And the Chiru who I have further wronged in seeking to destroy her completely, casting blindness upon her when I was angered to find I could not force a greater suffering on someone besides myself. I have watched time pass in the world above us ever since I was imprisoned here, so I know it has been mere months that have gone by since we fought, but to me, here in the last chamber before the Bethel Gates, those few months have been tho as thousands. Every moment here for an abandoned child who is claimed neither by the light nor the darkness has just seemed ever longer than the previous. And yet, the one you sought to destroy in unfocused rage has come before you once more to do her will and duty as an angel. To heal you. Zeli says with a sigh, 
Rian, Michiru, what have you all come for? Why should we ever meet each other again for the rest of eternity as we know it? And you even presume to bring other mortal creatures of the world like myself here with you to aid in this mission of mercy. So, human, elf, polyester, and angel of heaven, journey together through hell for the sake of one soul, at a time when there is an entire planet out there back across to Lysia that needs saving. Zealie spooms in anger. What insufferable folly! It makes me wish dearly to have just gone on the in the absolute silence of this uh, forsaken p prison than to have ever heard the voice of another living being again. As I stand now, the sentiments of those who walk in light only bring me further grievance. Are you all mad to care so much for one mortal soul who clearly does not want you soulless and goddesses or the loving redemption you come holding in outstretched hands? Take those naive principles and use them to defeat the lord of darkness threatening your world, why don't you? Hey, what's the big idea? Adia, Prian still cared enough about you to come all this way. What point is there in being so pigoted about this? Prian quietly says, Uri, please let me handle this. Alone, even words may make or break Zeelys at this time, child. Please stand back and trust in Prian's wisdom to save him. Hmph. <laughs> save me, you say? I suppose I might be in need of that, in a sense. But I sure don't think you goddesses and your little band of trained seals can do much for me. Besides, suppose I would rather remain alone. It is lonely and often downright torturous being here, so close to the holiest of realms where Serena dwells and yet not be able to touch her, yes. But here in the comforting silence of perdition, at least, I no longer feel the doubt and the confusion that I had all of my life, right up until the Lunas of Runeis banished me for my lack of absolute loyalty to their principles as Ancients of Darkness. Perhaps it was actually a favor they had done me, huh? I'm kind of glad that we're getting this recapping here about why he was here in the first place. Didn't really make note of that, and I kind of needed the reminder. Now I can be alone, needing neither the goddess nor, er, uh, neither the goddess and her Elvenian children, nor the almighty dragon and the rest of those who hail from the abyss. All I need believe in now is me, Zeely's Arden, period. I should have walked on, walked my own path from the very beginning, and depended on neither light nor darkness to guide me. I don't believe you mean any of that, Zeely's. I don't believe that for a second. Your feeling of separation from the Divine Mother who loved you need not be so, you know. Those of us who follow the light would still like very much to adopt you back into our family. We can free you of this binding darkness and bring you back with us to the world above, where love, hope, and forgiveness awaits. All you must do, a strange child of the human race, is want to be free. Don't you have somewhere else to be right now? That world of love and hope you speak of wanting to bring me back to won't be around much longer if you all don't hurry along. I see the life in Elvenia flickering out from here easily enough. She'll probably come to look even worse off than the Paprika Kingdom if the Dark Lord has his way. Perhaps. But one thing I am also sure to be true is that if we can defeat Zenobia and he is banished from the world, then you will also go with him, Zeelis. That is what my sisters and I fear more than anything now. Every trace of evil will disappear from Melvinia if we destroy the Almighty Dragon, and because you refuse coming back to the light, because of the fact that it was you who enabled Zenobia commit the heinous crime that he did against us goddesses, 
You possess the same demonic, malicious origins as the Dark Lord, and so you are scarcely any different than he. You led him to steal our very hearts and crush the token of divine love they were safely sealed within. You have yet to come back to the light, and you want no more to do with darkness now that Luna Silver Knights nice betrayed you, but... Praying continues more desperate. The darkness will claim you anyway if you do not come back to us now, and there is no coming back from the abyss, none. And right now, you run headlong into it, ignoring the cries of those who still care about you. Praying looks away, wiping one tear from her eye. It would have been a nice touch if she actually looked away. You said it yourself, Prian. I did it! I revealed the one flaw in the crystalline armor that is your heart as an angel of heaven to the Dark Lord in order to ensure the possibility that all four pillars holding up the world could one day be destroyed completely. It might as well have been my hand that tore your heart from where Serena held it endearingly close to her bosom and crushed it into dust, scattering the remains across the world like so much meaningless refuse. It is because of me that the divine creatures known as the soulless Emzu goddesses have been reduced to a state even lower than mortality. For if the Dark Lord slays you now, so too will your spears be vanquished. You will not even you will not be able to exist in Elvenia or return to the safety of the heavens. I can think of no worse crime, no greater act of evil than this, bringing angels to such a lowly state. Why do you still wish to claim me? Because I am an angel of heaven for love of Serena. I bring solace and healing, mercy and compassion, not scorn and condemnation. It is not who I was created to be. Zeli calmly says, Maybe so, but that grace... Greek cross of piety you bear as an angel won't mean a dang thing if you goddesses are no longer in the world to care for the people of Alvenia. Zeles more angrily says, Zenobia will destroy you completely if the light fails in this battle. To say that oblivion will be the fate of the Solus as Emsu angels is far too forgiving. And it looks as if that is pretty much what is going to happen at this point. The entire world will go to the abyss in a head ba hand basket so the Dark Lord erase the threat of Elvenia's one remaining hope. So what would it matter to you if I alone become part of the eternal void of darkness? Haven't you all learned anything by now in your trials together? It seems to me that you earthling humans and Elvenians standing here are actually no less wishy-washy than I am. A good indication, Elvenia and the angels who protect her are positively doomed. They have grown strong, Zeelies. They are prepared as they'll ever be to face an adversary like the Lord of Darkness. Tessera, Jersey, Bolas, Sarah, William, Paprika, Paprika, and the four heroes from the other world. We, as the guardian angels who have accompanied them all this way, can vouch for the growth in their hearts have experienced. We believe in them as much as they do in us. Pray tell, what is it then that you heroes of light believe you have gained on this journey so far that gives you such unwavering assurance of your readiness to face the one who intends to destroy the very goddess of fate herself? Well, fine. I can deign to possibly ruin my awesome image and risk sounding as sissified as these Elvenians long enough to tell you what it is I think I have learned and harnessed to make myself stronger, and I am sure everyone else here can too. For me, it is love. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth sometimes, but whatever. It's better than getting pre and upset with me. <laughs> Lynn picks up on the moment. Responsibility! Coming through for the people who depend on me. 
hope, and control of my fear. Wisdom and trust. Humility and temperance. And the belief in something beyond myself. Selflessness. Aye, that fighting hatred with more hatred is not the way of a true follower of the light. And forgiveness. Accepting forgiveness of myself and finding the courage to keep going on in life. Jersey softly says, And forgiveness is apparently what you yourself need now, human child who is loved unconditionally by the ruby solace emzu goddess Priyan. Make a choice, Zealies. Priyan can only keep on loving and forgiving you to the day you choose to end it all yourself. But the final step to your redemption must come from within. Jersey points toward her own heart. You must forgive yourself also. This is who we are, Zealies. And in your heart, you know that you desire the same. You are a human child of Serena. You are not your own, nor do you belong to the darkness, and it's time you admit that. Praying clenches an anxious hand to her chest. Zealies, please! How far must I go in beseeching you to receive my embrace of admonishment? Journey across the hell that is this kingdom has become all over again. I will, if that is what you want. Oh, that was a question. So Prien was asking what she has to do, travel across the desert all over again? You could go on forever, Prien. You and every other creature on this planet have no clue what the truth is, nor do you understand just how powerful a force it is you all are uselessly railing against. You've truly convinced yourselves that all of this, this the, these childish virtues of yours that you have thrown at me in your pretty speeches, will actually save Alvinia. Have you no idea what you are up against? I'm not waiting to see you all fall before Zenobia like so much wheat before the Harvester. Before the rest of Elvania goes with them, Solus Emsu Goddesses, I'll make your eight followers taste the power of the Lord of Darkness right here, right now. This person's overwhelming hatred. He really must possess the Dark Lord's power if the Goddesses cannot get any closer than this. I can barely feel a link with Ares at this point. What if Zealies will serve it completely? This sucks. If Priyan and the other goddesses are pushed too far away, how will we be able to... Show me! Show me this power you believe can overcome the darkness, then. Prove to me that light can prevail. Tessera draws her sword. I don't think we'll have any time to solve that particular problem, Uri. Here he comes. Okay. Zealy's Arden. Let's see here. Zealy's Arden. So, has no elemental strengths or weaknesses, but he has a whopping 7,500 HP. If I am remembering correctly, that is even more HP than the final boss. At least in one of his forms. Uh, traditional T says, if it were me reading this text, I would have flubbed it up at least 40 times by now. I'm terrible at reading things out loud for extended periods of time. Yeah, I mean, I've lived it 20 times, so I can relate. 
Okay. Uh, how to handle this? Instant death is not gonna work. I kind of want to rely on the fact that Uri has the ability to attack four times in one turn. So, Berserker. What else can we do here? Lower agility, possibly resist techs. You know, that's probably going to be a good idea in this particular fight. Let's go ahead and do that. Because probably going to have some of those. Agility could boost Uri's attack even more. Could boost defense, but that's such a low boost, it's probably not going to help a whole lot. Let's go ahead and boost attack a little bit more. Harrison, guard minus 12. That would also help. Guard minus 20 would help even more. Okay, let's see how well this works. Definitely strong. Did not work. Honestly, he's probably got like maximum immunity to things. Hello there, Torrance. Welcome to the stream. I'm fighting the game's super boss. Should I boost attack a bit more? One more time, probably. Sure. Harry Tech. Lynn. Do that as well. And Harrison, use a key nectar. I've acquired a bunch of these. And it's a good thing, too. Okay, next strategy will be to increase Tusk's agility so he doesn't go after the boss. SK says, eh, not so super when I think you are quite over level. Well, that's also entirely possible. Not to mention all of these affinity fragments I used to boost my stats. Okay, are we able to attack now? Dusk? Who is the one that had the agility? I think it was Harrison, but I'm going to check everybody. In any case, do that. Attack. Agility plus 16. Possibly. And I think you also has something to do with agility. Attack, attack. Nope. Okay. Do this. So I didn't get to find out to what extent I was able to boost Uri's attack, and I am uncertain whether petrification resets your stats. Do that. Actually, no. You're, you can be the one to cure that petrification as soon as I can find it. There it is. Okay. 
Okay, let's see what uh, Ari's attack does. Well, Dust continues to be some doing healing. And hit hard. Probably gonna need to use some more of those nectars. I'm under the dis distinct impression that Uri's attack was reset from the petrification. That's kind of unfortunate. Okay, Kekule Wind. I think we can get away with just one heal. I think on this turn, for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna have Lin attack with his weapons. And we'll find out... ...how his attack compares to Uri's. So Uri's causing around 70 points of damage. Uh-oh. Yeah, Uri's attack was definitely reset. That was unfortunate. All, all of that preparation gone to waste. Okay. Um. Hope Lin doesn't die. Lin didn't die. Will Starberries be enough? I'm not certain. So, I got all of these healing items. I'm gonna might as well go ahead and use them. There's that again. Ooh, this is getting annoying. Dangerous. A little of each. Okay. Does probably heal. And Miracle Pot to get rid of that petrification. And that petrification is why I'm not trying to boost Uri's attack again. Kinda of think of it, I never finished fixing the agility situation, did I? Just in case, do that. And there he's dead. So how to handle this? Dust goes first, so don't bother hurry healing Uri. Actually, what you need to do is recover some of your MP. And Lin, I think, goes before Harrison? I think? Let's see here. Angel Feather on Uri. And a White Cherry. Don't prove me wrong. Well, that doesn't help. Okay. Huh. 